So I am Dr Liz Lee and I work at Hallfield Health Centre which is a big urban general practice in Bristol and that's where we're sitting today. Well I'm Susie Freeman, I'm a textile artist and I live and work in London and I've made decorative textiles for about 30 years. So we traditionally have been making art out of pills that I prescribe and collect here, transport to Susie Freeman in London where she knits them into large flexible fabrics and, um, and then we create an artwork. The early thing I do is talk to Susie quite a lot about the medical side of things so that she learns and understands. So actually Susie's quite an expert on all sorts of medical conditions because we've gone into them in great detail. And I'm more involved in some of the early kind of shaping of the idea. And now she will take over, really, with the final actual... She actually really is in charge of how it looks because that's her great... She's an artist. She's an artist. So this is my knitting machine, which is a Swiss Juvia, and I knit a structure of pockets and pop things in. And I got it to do a particular kind of knitted pocket technique that I invented when I was at college. So I'm going to knit a section now. Where am I up to? sort of see that there's a little mesh pocket and what I'm going to do is put some pills in the pockets so pocket inside and then I pop that in it's a bit like sowing seeds so we were asked to make some work about the metabolic syndrome which made us ask ourselves what exactly is the metabolic syndrome and in fact the more you read about it the more complicated it is. What it isn't is a single disease so I don't have patients and they suffering from the metabolic syndrome but it is a, a, a series of different symptoms and conditions that overlap and together make a syndrome. When we talk about the metabolic syndrome, we will be talking about people who have hyperinsulinemia and that will often lead to diabetes. Um, but you're also more likely to get high blood cholesterol, high blood pressure and heart disease. I think I perceived it as something that wasn't really anything to do with me. I think that was part of the problem for me because with a lot of the other uh, conditions and medical experiences we make our work about, pharmacopoeia make work about, there's either a personal bit of personal experience or family experience or something and I don't have any family who have diabetes and, or heart disease so I just was sort of ruling it out. I kind of in my mind's eye see people who are very large <clears throat> think oh they must have it but actually you don't have to be very fat to get this so Susie and I did our waist measurements and we were horrified to see we were right on the borderline for developing well being more at risk of getting metabolic syndrome one of the things you would do if you were trying to work out whether someone had diabetes or whether they were you know what their situation was is that you would do a waist measurement and for a woman if your waist measurement is 80 cent over 80 centimetres, which is about 31 inches, you've got a real increased risk of getting diabetes. And I then measured myself, and uh, I'm not particularly big, I don't think, and was stunned because I was about that measurement. And then I realised that's the, that's the key fact that's interesting because it's everybody. In the end, what we've thought is we would make a piece of art based on the medication given to uh, one of my patients who has metabolic syndrome. I'm Jazz Ishtam, I'm 48. Um, I had a heart attack three and a half years ago. Um, 
And as I was saying, I didn't get any of the obvious symptoms. I just was very breathless, I couldn't breathe. Um, and when the ambulance came, they thought it was an anxiety attack. Um, but then I got rushed in hospital and put stents in. And, and then after that, I got diagnosed with diabetes. But because this isn't going to be shown in England, it's in Copenhagen, we've also got a patient who's Danish, and we've got her list of all the Danish medications she's got to. And, and we made those two, we sort of mixed them up into one person. Ja, jeg hedder Jakob Kravstrup. Jeg er praktiserende læge og professor i almindelig medicin ved Københavns Universitet. De fleste vil jo nok opfatte hende som en patient, der har sukkersyge. Altså type 2 sukkersyge, det der tidligere blev kaldt gammelmandsukkersyge. Nu er vi begyndt at se det som en del af et større billede, noget vi kalder metabolisk syndrom. And I, when I think of the metabolic syndrome, I think of it as a predisposition that some of us, many of us in society have to storing fat. So they say sometimes that people with metabolic syndrome might do very well in a time of famine. The problem is we're living in a time of plenty. Altså tidligere var der en vældig fokus på øh, sukkeret øh, ved sukkersyge. Øh, nu er vi nok øh, mere opmærksomme på, at det er en sygdom, der griber ind rigtig mange steder. Det har noget at gøre med, hvordan cellerne optager næring. Øh, og noget af det vigtigste ved, ved sygdommen, det er øh, faktisk fedtstofgivning. Og det viser sig, at Problemerne især opstår i kar. So both my mother and my grandmother had heart attacks at 60. Quite, my grandmother died and my mother nearly died. Um, my father had a heart attack in his 50, in his 40s, in fact. Uh, den kræver en uh, en aflig komponent, altså man skal have uh, en tilbøjelighed, men uh, det hænger meget sammen med hvordan vi lever. But what was it like getting a second diagnosis so quickly after the first one? It wasn't great. It was sort of like the straw that broke the camel's back, really. I didn't really cope with the diabetes, and in fact, so I think I've been in denial about it for the last few years, and really only now am, am addressing it at any useful level. And so the metabolic syndrome is quite nice as a way of understanding why things might have happened to you. So if you've got diabetes and heart disease, you think, am I just unlucky? And you can actually say, no, clearly, I've got a metabolic syndrome, and I can see my grandfather had it, and my brother's got it, and you can track it through the family. But the majority of the dress is going to be made by pills that are prescribed specifically for the metabolic syndrome. However, if you have the metabolic syndrome, there are often other consequences that are not directly related to it, but, but arise from it, and we call these comorbidities, and they're very important. So we will include this, our patients taking some treatment for arthritis, which is not part of the metabolic syndrome, but it's, a, it's another consequence of it. We also are going to add some antidepressants, um, and that's another common comorbidity with any chronic disease. Having something that you know you're going to have for your, the rest of your life, mm. I think is prime really to set you up for depression. So the dress will have different different medications but mostly showed separately but I think it will be too muddling to merge them all together whereas this identifies each one separately this is going on and this is going on and this is going on and there'll be antidepressants that come from a headdress that come down so you're showing that you know that's a comorbidity that's pretty debilitating in its own right. Once you'd had your heart attack, mm. you then had to start taking medication regularly. Huge amount of medication, which I really, really struggled with, and still struggle with. Yeah. Mm. How much do you do you take a day? Uh, yeah. I take um, seven different pills a day at the moment. For me, that's a, a lot. I'm not. I've never been a pill taker. I would avoid them at all costs, in fact. So it's 10 years of prescription pills, and that's the sort of figure that we've 
figures that we're starting with and we look, we've worked out how many drugs literally for each kind of thing. Day to day for 10 years, you know, you get these very, very large amounts of, of medication. And also just for those amongst us who don't take a lot of tablets, the thought of taking eight every day for the rest of your life is really hard work. How much time do you think every day you have to dedicate to your pill taking or looking Well, it's my weekly ritual. I pop all my pills out and put them in my little pill box. <laughs> and then every day I try and take, you know, some in the morning and some in the night. And uh, it becomes a little bit of a puzzle spill for patient and to stop behandling together. It should be in cooperation with the practicing doctor, of course. But it is a problem for nutiden og for fremtidens patienter, at vi får det her meget specialiserede sundhedsvæsen, samtidig med, at vi ikke har sygdomme, men patienter og patienterne får ofte flere samtidige sygdomme. Og det er ikke kun de gamle, der har det. Øh, mere end halvdelen af, af dem, der har flere kronisk sygdomme, er, er under de øh, 60. I don't know, I don't feel that old, and it's not a good look. You know? well, I, no, I can't agree. It's like an old person's pill tray. It, I feel like I'm at my parents' house. They get their tray of pills out and, you know, over dinner and pop them all out and stuff. And it's just not how I envisage my life spending. You know? Lots of people say, oh, I don't take pills. I don't need, you know, don't like that. Don't. But as soon as you have something, if you have a life-threatening condition, you're really grateful. And the reason that patients are taking so many different types of tablets for their diabetes is to try and prevent the complications. The complications that will eventually lead to early death, but will also lead to a, an awful lot of what we call morbidity, that is kind of suffering. I mean, the whole point of taking all that terrible tablets is to prevent problems in the future. Yeah. And you, uh, you sort of, do you buy into that all right? No, I don't, That's to be honest. Bad, yeah. yeah, I really don't. So there's a really big part of me that thinks I should stop this and just see what happens. But no, no I know, I know, and I talked to you about that, and you know, yeah. I, and I trust your judgment on that yeah. that stuff. So you know, but I, I continue yeah. to take them, and also I get all these side effects, and you know, it's not they're not nice either. So, and it's been it's been difficult at times because I think people perce sometimes perceive what we our work to be pro pills and you know it's all all about pills because we feature the pills it's harder to show a wider issue of like what a doctor does and the talking treatments and the holistic care that goes on and the whole you know det er et øh, billede hvor man skal afveje forskellige øh, problemer over for hinanden over for et levet liv for folk vil også leve andet når de er syge it's something I have to live with. Someone said to me recently, who, who is on long-term medication, that they've accepted it. And they might not like it, but they've accepted it as part of their life. And I thought that was actually a really good approach. It's like, it doesn't, doesn't mean I don't agree with it anymore, or I think, you know, it's problematic. But as part of my life path, I need to accept it. So why did we make a dress? Because we love dresses. <laughs> That's really why. To be serious, there is also this feeling that oh, metabolic syndrome hearts. And that's a man's thing, and actually, it's not a man's thing. It's all of us. Then, at a certain stage, we we we, we then decided we decided on a dress. I think I'd sort of pushed forward this idea that that an actual figure would um, be a good way of really engaging people. But in terms of the artwork, seeing all the pills I might have taken <laughs> in the last few years, I think could be a bit overwhelming, actually. So that, that, for me, that would be an interesting experience. If you look at anything over time, if you look at all the water you drink in a week or a month or a year, you know, when you see displays of it, it's, it's shocking. But with the pill packets, it's, it's um, I suppose it throws up more for me. I mean, no, no one sees that normally. Um, even the person who takes it is getting it at a prescription at a time, so you get a few 
but it's it's a whole process. It's influencing you. It's having some, you know, it's it's there in your life in a certain way. Det jeg synes er så spændende ved den her dukke, det er at eller kvinde. Det jeg synes er så spændende ved den her kvinde, det er at øh, det der normalt er skjult, det at leve med de problemer kroniske sygdomme giver, de er kommet udenpå. De ligger i lag udenpå hende, så vi kan, vi kan se det. Øh, hun har jo, om man så må sige, 10 års øh, problemer syet ind i tøjet. Det er ikke supposed to be didactic, så det er ikke supposed to be telling you what to think about a thing or educating you, but it's supposed to really um, stimulate your imagination to think in a, um, a much a very different way about medical issues. I think Liz's artwork is fascinating and I think it really makes a massive point about how we live our lives and the impact of medication and um, and maybe how that feels for people as well. It makes it very personal, I think, the artworks.